Hey welcome back guys, in this video we will be touching upon couple of key concepts. One of the main goal of the video is to show you how to work with multiple elements. So for that we will learn how to use the find elements method and how to loop through multiple web elements. But at the same time we will look into couple of miscellaneous stuff such as how we can print statements to the console for debugging purposes and we will also talk a little bit about the CSS versus the Xbox selector and how we can use that in Selenium base. So let's get started and take a look at what test we will be creating in this video. So I'm back here on our practice website and the test that we will be working through is basically looping through this li elements or all basically the list elements over here. So if I right click and inspect on this element, so I'm just going to select this one, the first one which is the home and if I just move this up, you can notice that we have this ul which is the unordered list and within that we have bunch of li elements which is the list elements, right? And these are all this list elements. So the one that we care about are just for the home, about, shop, blog, contact and my account. So basically the ones that actually contains a text. And you can notice here the ones that contains text have this ID which is menu item dash 489, uh, 491 and basically this different IDs. The other two which is this search uh, button over here and this icon over here for the cart actually does not have that ID which is menu item dash a particular number there. So this is how we're actually going to be working through and finding our unique selectors for each of these elements. So let's head over to PyCharm and get a base test set up. Okay, so I'm back here in PyCharm and over here, this is the test that we have created in our previous videos, which basically it goes to the home page and does some verification. So what I'm going to do is actually minimize this over here and instead just going to create a new test. So it is possible to add some new test here, basically this new method, just the way we did it for this test home page. I can go in here and then basically add a new one. So this time I can say test menu links. So once again, remember to add test in the beginning and then you can just name it whatever you want. So I'm going to do test menu links and over here, just to make sure that this test is independent of the test above, I will open up the practice website again and then I will try doing whatever I need to do here. This way I can directly run this test instead of relying on this particular test. And when you're working with automation, your best goal should be to try to keep your tests as isolated as possible so that you can parallelly run them without having to running into any dependency issues. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is open our URL. So I'm just going to add this comment here. So we'll do self.open and this part we already know. So I'm just going to do HTTPS. Just directly add in the website here, which is going to be practice.automationbro.com. All right, so after we open up the URL, the next thing we need to do is find our elements or basically the menu links. So to do that, I'm going to just add this here, the find menu links elements. So to find multiple elements, we're going to use the find elements command. So what that's going to be is self dot find underscore elements. And as you can see, that's already coming up over here. So there's another one, which is find element, which will only find an individual element. However, the first one here, find elements, will return us multiple web elements. And that's what we're looking for because we are working with multiple elements over here. And I will show you that quickly once we move over back to our Chrome. So I'm going to enter this here. So right here, we need to add a selector. So how exactly are we going to try to find this? Now here we have two options. So far in our previous videos, we have looked into the CSS selector way. So I can go in and add my CSS selector here, or I can also go in and do it through XPath. So that's also an option here. So let's take a look at how we can actually find the element using XPath. So I'm going to go back to Chrome to actually find that element and then we will come back here and actually place that element. Okay, so I'm back here in Chrome and we have our same practice at Automation Bro website here. And what we need to do is get access to this menu item. Now what I will do is first show you how we can access this using CSS selector. So I'm just going to show you a way how to do it using CSS selector and then I will show you how you can do the same thing through XPath. Now basically what we're trying to do is get access of all of these list elements. So it's going to return us six nodes. That's what our goal is going to be. Now I cannot just directly go in and just basically do primary menu. So let's say this is the unique ID here, which is primary menu. If I search for that, I can see that I have one node here. So this is unique, which is good. And from there, if I just do list, it's returning me nine lists there. So and the reason for that is it's actually returning all the lists that are over here, including these two. And I don't really want that. All I'm looking for is just these six over here. So to access that, I'm actually going to have to go through this menu item ID that's there. So here, I'm, what I'm going to do is we can see that it is doing menu dash item dash some number. 
So we will do star there so that it, we don't really know what that number is, but we're just going to assume that there's going to be something after dash. So that's how we're going to find. So I'm going to do primary menu and then in the brackets, which is the square brackets, I'm going to do ID and then I'm going to do star equal. And then I would actually add in the ID. So the ID is going to be menu dash item. And there you go right here. So at the moment I did menu dash item, and if I just, for example, just add in a dash there, it's going to show me there are six nodes and that's exactly what we are looking for. And actually I can even just get rid of this dash because this is an ID. So the moment I do ID equals menu item, we actually get all the six nodes right here. Because if you notice these two, these are classes, these are not ID over here. So I can do that list ID equals menu item and this will give me access to this particular thing here. And in fact, I can probably get rid of primary menu two and that should give me the same thing. Yep, it does. So we can just kind of use this, which is list ID equals menu item. So this is going to be my CSS selector. And the key thing here is that I'm doing star equal menu item. So what that means is that it should start with menu item. And after that, it doesn't really matter what it's going to be. So you can notice after that we have five, six, seven and all of this other stuff. But since we have been working with CSS selectors a lot, I just want to switch it up and instead use XPath instead. So to work with XPath, what we're going to do is just do forward slash and basically a typical XPath format. I'm going to do star and here I'm going to do the same thing. Oops, let me just fix that again. I'm going to do forward slash star and then I'm just going to do starts with. So I'm saying that, hey, my ID is going to start with and then do bracket here, add an ID and just say that it will be menu item that it's starting with the menu item. And the moment I do that, I get six notes again and the same way I can just kind of loop through all of those. So this is how you will find your ID through XPath. So it's totally up to you guys. If you want to use CSS selector, go ahead and use that. If you feel like you're more comfortable with XPath, then you can just make your own XPath and then use that too. In this video, I will just use XPath and show you how that works. Also, just as a side note, let me know if you guys are interested in learning about CSS selectors and XPath or basically how you can find your unique notes using CSS and XPath. Put that in the comments below if you're interested and then I can probably create a video on that too. All right, so for now, I'm just going to copy this XPath over here and then head back to PyCharm. Okay, so I'm back here in PyCharm and I'm going to simply just paste this here. So the key thing to notice here is that all we are doing is just pasting the XPath over here. I'm not specifying that, hey, I'm using XPath or I'm using CSS selector. If even I was using CSS selector, I could have just pasted that there and we don't have to mention that to Selenium base. The Selenium base goes ahead and actually does this identification for us and we don't have to worry about that. So that's pretty cool. All right, so let's see what we have done. So we have opened the URL and then we have find the elements using the find elements method. Now what find elements does is when you actually run it, it will return a list of matching web elements. So in our case, it will return a list of bunch of list elements because that was part of a menu item list that's going to return as bunch of list. Now these elements could be either hidden or visible on the page. It doesn't matter. It will still return it return us back. So to actually test this out, what we can do is print this particular thing and see what comes back. So to print it out, I'm simply just going to add print here and then just going to run our test. So to run an individual test, we can do that by specifying to PyTest using the dash K flag. So I'm just going to copy this here and basically just type in PyTest dash K and then I can type in test underscore menu underscore links. So this is a way for me to say to PyTest, hey, just run this test. Don't run any other test. Basically, that is in part of this test folder. And I can run this by obviously just hitting enter and then it will start spinning up our Chrome browser. Okay, so we ran our test and it was said passed, no issues basically. So at this moment, if you notice, nothing really printed out. And the reason for that is to print something out, we need to pass in another flag. So that flag is basically the dash S flag. So when I do dash S, it will actually print out what we are trying to print out in the console over here. Now, but one thing to notice here is using the dash K, it only ran one test. If you can notice, it says one deselected. So this thing right here, the first test, it deselected that. It didn't run that. It only ran just this one. So we know that this flag is actually working. Now we're going to add in another flag, which is dash S. What this will do instead is actually print out whatever we're trying to print out over here. So let's run this and see if this would print it out on our console. Okay, so this time it ran and we have this web element that got printed out. Now, if you notice here that this is a list, so it starts here, it ends here, and we have a bunch of web elements here. Now, these are basically all the web elements or that are part of our menu list. So this thing right here, menu links elements, this is actually that. So this is good that this is actually printing out all those list elements, but all we are seeing is basically the session ID and the element ID. 
So this is not really helpful for us. What we need instead is text. So how can we get that? Well, to get the text, we're going to have to look through this list and then print out text one by one. So for that, I'm just going to save this into a variable so that then we can loop through it. So I'm going to call this one, let's say menu links element, or I can just do L make it simple. All right. So I've saved this in a variable. Now I'm just going to loop through it. So loop through our nav links our menu links basically. Okay. So we can loop through this menu links element list, just the way we would loop through any of the list in Python. So I'm going to use the foreign loops for that. So I'm going to do for link element in menu links element. And then here I can actually print out my link element. I can just do print link element dot text. Now, if I run this, it should technically print out the text for each of these web elements there. So let's see if this would work for us. Okay, so this passed for us. And if you can see, it actually printed out all of these uh, menu links items for us. So we have our home, about, shop, blog, contact, and my account. So that's pretty awesome. So that means this is actually working. We are able to get all those list elements and we can also print it out using the dot text command. So that's nice. The next thing we're going to do is add our assertion in our test. So right now we're just printing it out. But at the end of the day, what we want to make sure is that the list items we are coming back are actually the list items that we're actually expecting. So for that, what I will do is just create a new variable. So I can call this one, let's say expected links. So these are going to be my expected links. And here I can simply paste the links that I copied from there. So I can just paste them here and let me just quickly fix this formatting. All right, so I fixed the formatting. It's looking much better now. So this is going to be our expected links. So when we are looping through it, we're going to match each individual text that's coming back through one by one through each of these indexes. So currently with our loop over here, we don't really have indexes. So what I'm going to do is add an index here. So we'll just do index link element. And here I'm just going to use the enumerate method. So I will do enumerate and then put our links the element list over here under the eliminate method over here. So all I'm doing here is, hey, just give me the index to get the index. I'm using the enumerate method so that I can get the index for each of them. So this time, if I print out index and the link element or text, it should actually print out each and individual index for us along with the actual text. Okay, so let me move this up our test pass. And over here, you can see we are getting zero, one, two, three, four, five. So this is basically the indexes that we're getting back as part of our foreign loop. So that's good. Now I'm going to take advantage of those indexes and I will add in my assertion. So for assertion, I can just verify that my expected links verify the actual text that are going to be returned back. So I can do something like self dot assert equal. And then here I can say my expected links. And then in the bracket, I'm going to say index. It should match the links dot text. And let me just comment this out because we don't need it anymore. So here, all I'm saying is the expected links index. So first time when it will run, it's going to be zero. That should match the first text, which is going to be basically right over here. So zero should match home. One should match. Um, this thing should match about. The next one should match up and so on. So let's run this to see if our session would work. Okay, so we ran and our test successfully passed. We didn't get any errors. So our session is also working. So that's pretty cool. So our test over here is completed. And basically just to quickly review what we did is. So first we went to the URL, which is our main URL. From there, we use the find elements method and the find elements method returned us a list of matching web element. From there, we passed in the X path. Now, once again, this is optional. You can pass an X path or CSS selector, totally up to you. Based on that, we actually printed it out. What that was returning us was a list of uh, web elements. Now, what we did with that is actually loop through them. So we loop through it one by one and we use the enumerate method here to get the index. And after that, we are just verifying that, hey, each individual text that's returning back should match our expected list over here. Now, this looping part here, it could be done in other ways or in fact, the assertion could be done in other ways too. So for example, you can just loop through the entire list. You can push the entire list into a new list and then verify the two list, basically expected list and the new list. So that's also an optional. Either way, it doesn't matter which way you're doing it as long as you're asserting whatever you're trying to assert and it works. That's all that matters. All right. I hope now you understand how to work with multiple web elements in Selenium Base and Python. So go ahead and try this out on your own and work with some other examples. And let me know in the comments below if you have any questions or if you run into some any issues. 
So that's it for this video guys. If you enjoyed this video, remember to smash that like button and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more content like this. And don't forget to hit that bell icon. Also leave a comment below if there are some other topics you would like me to create some content on too. That's all for now guys. I will see you all in the next one.